welcome to episode 10 of Beginner Web Design, and I'm not really sure what to call this episode because it's kind of going to have a bunch of different information. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is tables. And what you really need to know about tables is that a few years ago, people thought that it was fine to create an entire website only using tables with some cells having background images and other cells having text and they would just create entire sites just out of pure tables. The reason why this was so commonly accepted was that Photoshop could actually export HTML data but it only exported it in tables. But this is an extremely terrible way to code and it'll just be much harder to edit, much harder to make and chances are the page load time will be so terrible due to how many images you will put on your page in the tables. It's a terrible way to design a website and tables should never be used as that. However, tables still should be used for tabular data. So maybe if you wanted to have a product list on your website, that's something that you would use tables for. So the first thing we have to do to create a table is use the table tag. All of our table information is going to go right into this table tag. Now inside table, there are table rows, and then inside those rows, there are cells. So each row is with the TR element right there, and that's one row going across of cells. So if we add a few table data cells here with the TD element, we can just type some text in. So I'll type in... Um, price then I'll do another one and make it name another one and make it uh, quantity and now if we preview this uh, we see not much here we're just gonna get this three basic little thing here and um, just to better show you what it looks like we can actually add an attribute to table called border and if we set this to one, we get a, a little border here. And usually that's not an effect that you're looking for, but I'm just going to keep it on just to show you how this works. So you could see we just have one row of three cells here. So if just say we wanted to add one item here, I'll make another table row, and then I'll say uh, a new cell and make it, I don't know, uh, $1 and I'll make this lemonade and I'll make it four and now you can see it all lines up it it uh, it stays at the same width as the longest row which is this one up here and it just kind of fits in nicely together we could do this how many times we want so I could just take another table row and make this say two dollars iced tea for six and you can see we get the same thing here there's not really that much to tables the only other thing there is is um, price name and quantity doesn't have to go in a table row it can actually go in a table head because it's kind of the header of the page or you could use the table head for something different like uh, I don't know the name of your table so if I use a table head here I could put in a, a row and a cell here and make this uh, items for sale and that's my table head now one thing to note is that whenever you're using a table head you have to automatically use a table body for the rest of the content so I'll put that in there okay and now you can see we have here's my table body and here's my table head now you'll notice that the head uh, is only covering for one column here and that's typically what it's supposed to do because it's a data cell so if we want it to span across multiple columns we can use the attribute call span and I'm gonna set this to three and now you can see it goes across three columns it's going across the entire thing now and that works for any data cell, not just the ones in the header. 
and there's also a T foot if you want to use that T foot and uh, we'll make a, a row and maybe make a, a cell called uh, I don't know copyright drink company now if we preview that uh, we just have to add call span equals 3 and now we get that effect so that's a pretty easy way to build the table and this is all editable in CSS so I'll give you an example of that so I'm gonna get rid of this border actually I'll leave it on there and let's just say we want all of the data cells to be to have a 200 pixel width so we can do that if we just type in TD and we'll set the width to 200 pixels and if I open this up in my browser here and I refresh we get the 200 pixels and you could see that the table header and the table footer are automatically 600 pixels and the reason that is is just because it has the call span of three so it's automatically going to take on the width of three of these cells instead of just one like the others do and you know we could do pretty much anything we could do background colors background images borders whatever we want and that leads me to something else that I wanted to show you and I'm actually going to leave the table there I'm not going to touch that because we'll come back to that but I wanted to show you more selectors in CSS so I'm going to make two paragraphs here and I'll grab a little uh, paragraph from my widget here we go okay and now let's just say that we had some links in both of these little areas here so I'll make some uh, make some links here just some random links okay now if we preview this we see we get the two paragraphs and they both have some links in them so let's just say we want our links to be purple so we could just type uh, a and then we could use color is purple and if we preview that our links are purple so that works but here's the problem with that let's just say we want the first paragraphs link to be purple and the second paragraphs links to be red well there's two things we could do here the first one is assign a class to every single a element so we could add a class of purple to this one and to this one and a class of red to this one and to this one and while that works it's kind of annoying because now if you ever add another link in the future you have to remember to put that class on there or else it won't be applied so what do we do well we can use another selector and so let's first just add a class to our P's so I'll name this one purple and I'll name this one red and what we actually have to tell CSS is to select all of the A's that are in purple so in order to do that we type the purple class name a space and then an A and this means just exactly what I just said select all A elements that are children of the purple class children just refers to anything that's inside of that element so you can see here that this A is inside this P so that A is a child of purple and purple is a parent of the A so now here in dot purple A we can just type color purple and you can see that all of the uh, the A's in that paragraph have that style applied to them but the ones in the other paragraph do not so now for the other one we could just type red A and set this to color red and now that has that effect so this is purple this is red 
it all works. Now this is really helpful for the tables as well because maybe you want your your data cells to have a slight gray background but only on the table header and the table footer not on the actual content. Well you don't even have to type anything extra into your HTML. All we have to do is say t head td and that t head td just means all TDs that are inside a T head. And now we can type background color and we'll use pound sign DDD which is a hex for a light gray. I know I've used that before. And now we get that on the head. Now we could duplicate that. I'll just copy and paste and make it T foot. And now we get the same thing on the foot. Now here's one more neat trick that you can do. Instead of having two different selections here, we can actually combine them both because the same style is being applied to two different elements. The way we do that is only with the use of a comma. So we can just put a comma here and then put T foot TD. And now it's saying select all TDs that are a child of T head or all TDs that are a child of T foot. So it's going to apply this same style to both of those elements. And now you can see we get the exact same effect. So that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has taught you a few different things. And remember, don't build your entire website out of tables, but you can use them when you need them.